We are excited to be here on Tuesday at Base 2023. We've got a full uh, agenda today here at the live studio inside the exhibit hall, several informational and of course entertaining interviews as well. And my first guest is Dan Elwell. Dan, thank you for being here. Dan is a former acting and deputy FFA administrator. And of course, the big thing that we want to talk to you about is the AAMs. Tell us what is new in the advanced air mobility landscape. Well, everything is new in the <laughs> right. AAM landscape. Um, we're, we're currently in the process, FAA is in the process of certifying the vehicles. Um, uh, before the, these vehicles can be used for commercial service to carry people or cargo, uh, they have to be certified, of course, by the FAA. Uh, the vehicles, several vehicles, are in the process of, of being certified. And then separately, their operations, their authority to operate as a commercial entity has to be approved. And that is a different process, right? One is on the vehicle, one's on the operation. The pilots have to be trained. So right now, the, this nascent industry is working on how are we going to train pilots? What level of training do they need? Because these are new and unique vehicles. Um, and I would say that within the next two years, we should actually see some of these companies flying commercially, passengers and cargo. Wow. Do you think for the pilot, is it more training, less training, or just different training? I think it's going to be the same amount of training. It, it will be role specific. It will be um, technologically specific. These are new uh, technologically advanced aircraft. So it will be different. Um, but it will be just as thorough, just as intense as the pilot training I went through once upon a time. And is this technology, is it important just for sustainability goals or is there more to this? That's a great question. It's, it's definitely sustainability goals are going to be enhanced tremendously by AAM, particularly with the uh, EV TOL, which stands for electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Um, but also much of the technology for how to control these new aircraft are going to make them safer. Uh, both the design of the aircraft and the flight controls and how the pilot uh, integrates uh, his skills or her skills with the vehicle itself. And I know that our goal is the sustainability goal of net zero, right, by 2050 for greenhouse gases. Is this, you know, how crucial is moving forward with this to reaching that goal? Well, yeah. it's, it's, it's uh, about as, as crucial or as good a step forward for uh, zero growth as there can be because these are electric vehicles, fully electric. Uh, I'm associated primarily with um, Joby Aviation. Uh, they have a six rotor EV tall craft that is uh, powered fully electrically. Now, of course, um, charging these aircraft uses, uh, uses energy, um, but there is no emissions. Um, and also, in, from a sustainability and environmental perspective, they're incredibly quiet. Um, the design of their rotors and these engines have uh, reached a level of acoustic non-obtrusiveness, is the best way to put it, that we've ever seen in aerospace. And I know that, you know, in order to make this happen, and to reach the goals that we have for sustainability, you've got people, organizations, the government, mm -hmm. they all have to work together. How difficult is that? It can be difficult, um, but when it works, when the industry is aligned with the regulator, uh, it can be uh, very, very efficient, very productive, and very safe. Um, it, it took FAA and it took industry a little time to sort of get synced up. Uh, a lot of the new entrants in this space didn't come from aviation expertise. They came from sort of the Silicon Valley dot com world, um, but they learn very quickly what aviation is all about and how important safety is uh, to aviation. On the FAA side, there were new concepts brought into these vehicles that FAA uh, regulators and engineers weren't particularly familiar with. We borrowed some of the technology, for instance, used in the development of the F-35. The flight control systems in the Joby aircraft are very similar uh, to the concepts used with the F-35 fighter. We have electric propulsion. That's new. FAA has to regulate and certify electric propulsion. It's a new concept. We also have what's called fly-by-wire. 
So the flight controls themselves uh, talk wirelessly from the, the stick or the yoke to the flight controls on the aircraft. That also is new. So there's been a courting period, if you will, between industry and the FAA on how these things work. Um, and the industry has uh, helped FAA come to understand the, all of the concepts. And the FAA, I, I must say, has really dived right in to help uh, and to get this industry safe and operating. And I've heard you say safety several times. I know yeah. you're a safety expert. That's very important to you. Do you find when you're talking to people, whether it's just regular people who think that they'll fly in one of these someday, or is it pilots or people who work on them or anyone, do you think people are more excited or a little more nervous? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's the nature of the flying public to be a little bit nervous at first. Mm -hmm. But I can assure you, the engineers that are, that are building these aircraft and the pilots who are flying them and will fly them will be extremely confident because we have a system that doesn't go into commercial service until there is a full level of confidence. In fact, I grew up in this industry. I've been a pilot my whole life. Um, and I've, I've told the AAM folks, sign me up. I'll, I'll train and fly uh, these things uh, my first opportunity because I'm that confident in the professionalism and the design uh, qualities of these aircraft. Well, we have you know, self-driving cars mm -hmm. and self-parking cars. We have autopilot now, right? Yep. So it's just the next natural step. Yep. It is, it is the next natural step. And most of the uh, industry is going to begin flying EV tall aircraft. Uh, for commercial service with a pilot. But the goal is eventually to be autonomous, to be fully autonomous. And part of the reason that we'll start with piloted vehicles uh, in the cockpit is to get the public in a place where they can accept autonomy. Uh, I mean, when they first started those um, autonomous uh, trains around airports. Right. I remember I was flying out of DFW at the time and when they first inaugurated those, it took a week before anybody got on them. So um, it'll take time, but I'm confident, I'm we'll confident get we'll get there. All right. What are you most excited about this week being here at BASE 2023? I just, I'm super excited about seeing all of these new products that I have not yet seen. Um, and also for us in aviation, um, this is, you know, it's old home week. I'm meeting and seeing and catching up with so many great professionals I've known through my whole career. And it's, it's like a big reunion, but I'm also very, very excited about the new um, goals of NBAA and Gamma and the whole civil aviation world right now towards sustainability. It's an exciting time. All right, Dan Elwell, thank you so much for being here. We My appreciate pleasure. your time. Fantastic information. All right, we have much more to come. Stay with us right here on NBAA TV.